Around the world, colleges and universities were seriously affected by the pandemic. But here in China, the impact has lingered. Universities, including American schools that have campuses here, are open as usual. But the number of Americans attending them has plummeted. A decade ago, there were nearly 15,000 U.S. students in China. Today, there are only 350. Those numbers from the State Department. It's like a 98 percent drop. And it's a problem that won't be easily fixed, according to the U.S. ambassador here. American universities couldn't run their summer study programs. They couldn't run their junior year in China programs. And so it all just dried up. We need to have the next generation of China experts for our entire government. They come out of these universities. But frankly, we're going to need some help from the Chinese government. They're going to have to give the visas and create the atmosphere that would be receptive to American students coming back. It wasn't just the pandemic or China's zero COVID rules keeping American students away. U.S.-China relations have hit a unique low in recent years, and the tension has trickled down to student and scholar exchanges, which had long sort of greased the geopolitics. At NYU Shanghai, it's meant a dramatic change in the landscape, since the campus was the first American university to establish here back in 2012. There are fewer Americans. In terms of enrollment, it's tough for me to say there are fewer due to the inability to get back or maybe the hesitance to come back due to um, the situation on the ground here. What is the long-term impact? I think just one of the benefits of being here is being somewhat of a soft and formal diplomat of the country and the culture and not having actual Americans having that experience and being able to go back and testify and speak to their communities about what actually happens is a huge loss. Now, to be clear, the number of American students here was in decline even before the pandemic, which gutted study abroad programs everywhere. Figures from the State Department and the Institute of International Education show that hundreds of thousands of Americans just stopped going to Japan, the UK and other countries to study. The number of Chinese students going to the US has slipped too, but only slightly, down 15 percent from two years ago to roughly 300,000. International students are a huge revenue source for US schools. In 2018, Chinese students contributed 15 billion dollars to the economy, according to the Commerce Department. The challenge with China, it could take years for U.S. student numbers to bounce back. The country only just reopened to tourism in March, and the mood here has, well, shifted. Megan C. started at NYU Shanghai four years ago. Despite all the headwinds, she wants to graduate this year, so she came back from Maryland. I think there are obvious benefits of being exposed to a place that, I mean, clearly has a lot of importance in the U.S. in terms of um, U.S. foreign policy and U.S.-China relations. In any difficult, challenging relationship, and that's what we have with China, right, a relationship really based on competition globally, you need ballast in the relationship, and people are the ballast. You want the two countries, people, to be talking to each other. And 20-year-olds probably do that best, and they achieve a degree of familiarity and expertise in a country that is lifelong. Janice McEfray joins us now live from Beijing. It is such a fascinating look at these dynamics here, Janice. Thank you for bringing us this reporting. Uh, what about the other side of this? Did any of the students you talked with say anything about how their Chinese counterparts are feeling about coming to study here? Definitely. I mean, there are a lot of factors that are influencing Chinese students uh, in their decision on where they want to study abroad. Certainly the pandemic has had a lot to do with uh, uh, reasons to not go to the U.S. Remember, the borders here only opened a few months ago. So if students were leaving in the last few years, they were doing so with not knowing if and when they'd be able to come back and see family. Uh, but beyond that, what we've heard from, from young people and in particular from their parents is that they're influenced by what they see on the news. And what they see coming out of the U.S. is a rise in gun violence, a rise in anti-Asian mm. attacks, uh, the politics uh, between the U.S. and China right now. Uh, and then, then there's the cost of, of an education in the U.S. for international students paying those international right. tuition rates. All of these things are, are factoring into the decision. And what the young people have told us is that they're going to listen to their parents. And if their parents are telling them to look at the U.K. 
or uh, Canada or Australia. Uh, increasingly, the numbers are showing that's what they're doing. I just want to add, though, Hallie, yeah. having a U.S. education still carries a lot of prestige uh, for Chinese students. And they're, they're looking at the chance to learn English and their employability uh, when they come back to China. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.